Welcome to the fourth installment in our introductory USD for Developers series. If you haven't seen our earlier videos, be sure to watch to learn about the other superpowers in OpenUSD. In this video, we'll be introducing you to one of USD's game-changing features, data source interoperability. Any digital content creation tool can be connected to USD, allowing data from different tools to be used in the same scene or project. Asset Resolver plugins abstract storage backends from data represented in USD. This, in combination with file format plugins that abstract the serialization of that data, enables complete decoupling of USD from file systems. Additionally, these plugins can natively ingest external data sources with configurable granularity. Together, these concepts provide a key piece to aggregating all the content needed to describe and simulate virtual worlds in full fidelity. To understand how asset resolvers play a crucial role in bringing external data into the scene, let's look at an example. Here, a flower pot is being brought into a kitchen set scene. The asset path, which is delimited by the at sign, points to flowerpot.usd and is prefixed by dot slash to indicate that it can be resolved relative to the location of the referencing layer. However, the source data for the reference to flowerpot.usd could be stored in Omniverse Nucleus, a cloud-based platform. In this case, Omniverse provides Nucleus frontends to USD via Asset Resolver plugins. These plugins enable customizable logic to locate resources referenced by asset paths similar to Universal Resource Identifiers, or URIs, used on the web. File format plugins also play a crucial role in enabling USD to support a wide range of external data formats. A file format plugin must implement queries and optionally writes to conform to the data specification of individual USD layers. This means that source data that already exists in other formats can be ingested into OpenUSD natively. The default distribution of USD on GitHub comes with file format plugins for Alembic and OBJ, allowing users to import data in these formats as native USD references. For instance, we can see this in action with the Alembic Octopus and OBJ Teapot shown here. With USD, we can author sparse, non-destructive overrides to position and scale these references and hierarchies within the scene's world space, providing flexible and granular control over imported assets. A major advantage of file format plugins is that they allow external data to be natively imported into USD without requiring a separate conversion tool. The external data does not need to be backed by files in the USD ecosystem, as any plugin capable of answering basic layer and metadata queries can serve data from external sources. This abstraction is incredibly powerful for assembling disparate data sources into a unified ground truth representation of a virtual world. File format plugins also support dynamic payloads. Think of dynamic payloads as parameterized access to external source data. Imagine you're building a digital twin of a manufacturing plant. You have a lot of data that describes the different components and processes in the plant, but not all of it is relevant or necessary for every use case. This is especially useful when you're dealing with large, distributed databases that store vast amounts of annotative data for product or plant lifecycle management. It's just not practical or efficient to convert all of that data into USD explicitly. Instead, you can use dynamic payloads to adjust and expose the data you need on demand. Now, let's take a look at how dynamic payloads can be used with external sources. We've created a simple Hello World example that utilizes the REST API provided by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. As you can see in the browser on the left, we have the different departments available and when we select the Greek and Roman art department, we can see individual objects being populated on the right. And finally, all the fields have been populated as USD attributes. The API provides access to the museum's catalog, including a schema for individual objects. At level zero, we can only query the catalog at the department level. But by moving up to level one, we can also query the individual objects within those departments. We can control the number of objects queried per department by setting the LOD count parameter. The beauty of dynamic payloads is that there is no limit to the level of parameterization we can expose to the UST ecosystem. For example, each department could be its own separate dynamic payload, or individual prims could expose explicit attributes to drive further REST API queries. Thanks for watching this overview of asset resolvers and file format plugins in OpenUSD. 
You can find examples and boilerplate for implementing these plugins on GitHub. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of our USD for Developers series.